Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We look very punceled and swallow. 1997. Oh, I yes. love it. Love yes. that color on you. Thank love you so much. It. Yes. <laughs> this is The Skating Lesson. We are going to be discussing everything going on in skating this week. So if you are new here, subscribe below and smash that like button. We need validation like these skaters who are missing an audience. Jonathan, how are you going? What's going on? I'm tired. I know, I know. Well, so I was actually interested to talk about this a little bit. I just finished like a teaching stint, um, oh. like through this like virtual Chautauqua opera program. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, it's exhausting on Zoom to give so much energy like nonstop. So I'm curious how these coaches that are like coaching via Zoom, like I have to give so much more than mm. I would in person, I find. Like for instance, your one-on-ones with Victor, there's mm. no moment where, like on the ice when you're like resetting or skating around and he can just kind of check his phone or just sort of decompress. It's like so intense, I find mm. that kind of concentration. So it's How like a different kind of exhausting. Hmm, between five and seven hours. Okay. Without, and then you have to like tell the student you need to go pee, you know what I mean? Yes. It's like a really, <laughs> I'm sure it's something therapists feel often. Are so you teaching in the fall? People are gonna wanna know what's, what's happening. Oh yeah, I, I have even taught some um, viewers from the skating lesson. No way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shout out to Mary, hi. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's oh really my goodness, fun. I want I want a real I want a full report. Okay. Okay. Full okay. report. She's great. I'm enjoying it. So. Okay. Amazing. I'm incredible. So yeah, I've been um I don't know if I what I said in here. I am at work. I usually work in communications and the company I work for is putting on like a TV show. And whenever you do the first episode of something, it's always extra time and extra hairy. So we're recording our first episode on uh, August 13th. And I am the like the in-house producer, the associate okay. producer, very Mary Tyler Moore, right? And then the, the executive producer is an external person who worked for Good Morning America. And um, actually her brother who also worked for Good Morning America is the director. Um, so I am the person who has to like get it done. Make get it happen. Done. Make yeah. it happen. Which is, I have like, it, it's a great opportunity. It's been, it's been really amazing, but it's exhausting because I'm still trying to balance my other work or you know, I think eventually it's out. This is all above me, but I get the vibe. What may happen is I may transition from one department to another. God, like who knows? It depends Wait, if everything goes Departmentally well. promiscuous. Remember yeah. when you said national? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, this is a way there are queens handling, you know, dealing. I am just <laughs> just a pawn. Man. You're just, just a pawn. A pawn. Yeah. yeah. You're but, just a truce of uh, in all these machinations of the coaches above you. In health insurance, there's like a really busy times of the year that are coming up. So I think the fact that this is happening right before the bit, it's like you're not moving now, but maybe, you know, later. <laughs> so, um, okay. Yeah. There's like the open enrollment period and everything. So it's just been like, thank goodness for working from home. That's all I have to say. It's like, thank goodness because- Well, I bet so that's much... taking a lot out of it with that commute and stuff, being able to yeah. just kind of be in your own space. It's just like easier to transition and it's easy to like handle things. Like when you don't have to see people in person, you could like be talking to one person on the phone and like rest that email. Maybe that person would have come up to you in person before and you can like right. prioritize easier. Right. I enjoy not having to see these people in daily life. I don't know about Just saying, just saying. Say well, <clears throat> I'm also gonna say, cause now I, I hope I'm not like saying something I'm not supposed to, but yeah. um, you did the interview on See Alive with, with Lisa Irvin. Oh, that is separate. That is for oh, an upcoming project. I, oh, sorry, Dave. I'm blowing that is, up. Okay. Okay. That okay. is separate project. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things yeah. are getting squirrely. Okay. <laughs> that's been going on too for a, a little while, but that's exciting. I enjoy. You got that. a lot of irons in the fire. That's what I'll say because yeah. I'm really excited to catch up on what's coming up next, Dave. Yeah. So yeah, we're lots going on, but in the middle of all this week. If you recall, Victor went to Ukraine for my own personal skating. And I really enjoyed working with Victor, you know? Working with an Olympic gold medalist on your jumps is a nice thing to do. But he's a very calm yet stern energy. And like we had to okay. adjust to Victor. Like each personality 
that are strong. It's like a lot to, and like mentally you learn his technique and everything. So when he was leaving, I was like sad. And I was like, well, what am I going to do about my technique? Like if I go to another coach, they're going to change it or it's going to like, I'm going to lose it. They haven't like done it that, you know, and I'm still in process. So, you know, I asked for Galena to, I said, well, could you, well, first I said, well, maybe your bro, I, cause I didn't think she would, I knew she wasn't co like coaching at this point. So I said like, maybe I could go to your brother in Connecticut and see, I'm just like problem solving, but you know, he wasn't working on the weekends and the whole thing. So, and I was like, okay, like, well, would Galena come in? And he was like, well, I don't know. You know. Only one way to find out. Yeah. So he talked to her and of course, like she made, you know, we had to wait, Jonathan, I have to tell you, I had like a plan B. I had like evaluated all of the coaches in the area and being like the pluses and minuses for each. I, you like, know, and I believe you, I've seen those kinds of charts that you make. I, I would imagine there's an extensive database. Okay. <laughs> so Galina says, yes, you come to ice rink, you know. So the first lesson is supposed to be on Tuesday. Because the other thing in this is that because of the way that the pandemic is, there's not like a lot of availability at certain ice rinks where certain coaches teach. Like there, there's a lot more rules during COVID just so that, I mean, people can even make money and rinks can even right. make how they're selling ice and the whole deal. So there's like very small windows that this can all like happen, especially like with my job and you know, anything. Right, right, so, exactly. <laughs> so the first lesson is supposed to be on like, it's the day that we get the tropical storm when all the power oh. is going out. And it's just like so funny because I'm staying with my parents, you know, during quarantine. And my mother is a very strong personality who is like, you are not going to the rink. And I'm like, does Galena want to go to the rink? Like, <laughs> yeah. if Galena's going, I'm going, yeah. Like, and like, I'm trying to like find out like, is the ice house going to be open? And it's interesting because I've listened to podcast and there was Jennifer Sagan one where she was like you know in these sports it's like a cult and it's just like cult thinking so of course the father who ice dances whose sons also skate he's going to the rink and I'm like right. well of course he's like I may have to open my garage manually but I'm gonna go to the rink and I'm like this tracks yeah 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 exactly because what like, time was your lesson it, it's at six. We get there. We get there at five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. You don't know me. I don't know you. You don't know Galina. We get there. We jump off of ice, and you know. Okay. So, meanwhile, I call her, and I'm like, "Should we clean it? I don't want you driving in this. You know." She's like, "I don't." Like, "Oh my god." You know. So, we went up Thursday, but okay. already, like, the Galina phone calls are like next level Gold. <laughs> okay. i already know that galena has a hybrid lexus that she's obsessed with okay 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 she's very earth conscious 50 percent gas 50 percent electric oh my god perfect car perfect car. you know okay. the whole deal. she lost power during it of course like i get there early galena's already there waiting outside and <laughs> like nice. johnny's book is like real life about her. Okay. Like, don't okay. like if you yeah, um we immediately start work jumping like off ice. And like she's just like staring at you. And like she's evaluating technique, but she's also evaluating you as a personality. Of course. I think that's so important. Who she got in front of her. Yeah. Like Victor is like very technical and like you work on all the progressions. He's not playing mind games with you the whole time. Mm. So like he's the man with the bow tie near him and right, Oksana. Right. And Galita is like head coach. Okay. And like you begin to figure out like what that because like Americans don't really do that as much, right? Like they're all about their ego. So like if Tom Z taught you a jump, he is going to take full credit, you know. Right. Wants to be all the things. Yeah. And like, she's very technical too, but she's like a different layer, <laughs> you know? Like okay, it's, um, okay. so immediately, like 
she starts comparing me to different animals and like, you know, arms look like crocodile, you know. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna course, guess that one wasn't a compliment. Not a compliment. Okay, okay. My, my arms she weren't in the air the way she wanted them, right? Okay. But then, like, I don't know, I was like doing like singles off ice and I was like so, like just like, like nervous, you know? And she yeah. immediately uh, she's like, she's like, I watched your video. You did this wrong with head. You did, and I was like, oh, she had studied the videos Victor sent her. I was like, oh, oh dear, okay. We're like getting like, we're just going right in, okay? And she did her homework. I kind of love this because it's very easy for someone in that position to just go and phone it in. Oh, Jonathan. Yeah. Um, like she does like the same warm up as Victor, but like she's explaining them and like, you don't say you've done them before. Like you just go. You just you right, know like right. get every morsel. Yeah. She explains to me that she's worked with American skaters. Like you, I worked with Johnny Weir. Like obviously I know that. Like we're you, aware of your you, pedigree. You know, no, no, no. <laughs> and I think many skating fans would be like, yes, I know. No, 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 no. You just right. let you have to let this happen. Get okay? out of the way. Get out of the right. way for this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we go. Then we go to the ice. And she's like, I talked to Victor. I don't like it how you guys organize practice on ice. And I was like, because Victor and I, we would have like a very specific, we do edges, we do turns, we do spins, we do jumps. And like, we got a lot accomplished. And I felt like I was, in, Jonathan, no. Jonathan, <laughs> that is not what Galena likes. That's not what she, she wants. Yeah, change everything. <laughs> okay, what does she want? I think you're jumping too tired. Uh, oh, well. okay. So she comes on the ice, right? She's in her designers. She's like telling the coaches, like, they're like, oh, Galena, you're here. Like she walks in like the queen that she is, right? Good. And she said something in Russian to one of them. And she said that her, um, the moths were starting to eat her clothes. So she needed to show them off. And that's why amazing. she was in the ring. <laughs> 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 that's amazing. You know, like, she hasn't taught in skates in like 40 years. Okay, like ever, like, but you wouldn't even really know, like Victor will skate on the ice with you. The sheer force of her personality gets mm. it all across. Okay. 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 Um, she watches and like, I, like, I didn't even know if I had feet under me at a certain point because like the way she's watching and you're and she's like, and she, like, she picks up on different like personality things like quickly, right? And like, you don't know what he told her, what he didn't, but. Right. But she's just like, the jump entrances, like you can negotiate them with Victor and he'll make his technique work for you. And she'll be like, that looks beginner. What are you going to do is this. Okay. So like she changed my Lutz entrance, which like used to be like a very prestigious jump for me. Like we just got used to it the Victor way. I was starting to feel very comfortable. And she's like, uh-uh, you're gonna go like this and then you are going to, right? And then she was having me go and okay, you're gonna do three jump combo. And it's like, wait, like my Lutz doesn't even feel. And she's like, uh-uh, you're doing three jump combination and you're like, boom. And then you're just like, I mean like some of the hardest falls of my life, but also like you just get up and you, you do it. So um, it's like, she gets more, out of you in a way. Yeah. But like, he also gets a lot out of you too. It's just like a different, like fit. Like it's hard to describe like what is really happening here. Right. But she is like, but she's also very encouraging. Like he's very even. Like he yeah. is very like even. And she goes like, Dave, I'm not an American coach. If it's terrible, I'm going to tell you. And I'm like, okay. But when it's good, she's like this, like. Okay. And she's also being, important. And, but she's like, see, you do it like Alina likes it and now it's working, you know? And you're you like. You please me and the world is good. <laughs> okay. And then it's just like, I'm trying to remember like all the different stuff, but I think she started to realize that like, I'm very intense but that I also, and she's trying to get you to like relax to get more out of you. And I think she realized that I have like an abject sense of humor, like pretty quick. Right. Like, okay, okay. She's like, Victor like never does, right? And immediately she's like, Dave, arms. Like, you don't use arms. You look like a monkey at the zoo. 
<laughs> <And> I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then like she had me do like a three jump combo. Dude. Jumps like you look like the combination look like Russian Matryoshka doll. Like smaller. Getting smaller. it smaller, smaller. Oh my god. <laughs> Dave, you man, jump it like one. And <laughs> then at one point we're working on like twizzles and something and she like they have a do like a very specific twizzle rotation exercise that's like different than a usual twizzler that an ice dancer would do where they have you put your leg in front and have you do the arm rotation position and like oh, okay. and, like both do it it's a little like tricky right for especially if you're like new to twizzles she was like she goes behind my ear and she like, whispers and she goes dang you have a good body. Why you look handicapped? <laughs> and you're like, would you like to expand on that? Like, would you like to hone in on a part of my body that you would like to be in a different position or what's I, I, You knew exactly what she meant. Like she yeah. wants your arms to be more relaxed and like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, she's like, you have a healthy body, look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. just like, it's just like the outrageous humor. You can tell like, She's effing with me because she yeah. is trying to like read personality type here. Yeah. Like, uh, just like, oh my God. And, and like, this was a lot because how long was the session? It was an hour, but we also jumped a half hour before. She okay. wants me to come a full hour before. Actually, no. She is going to come a full hour before. I'm going to come 10 to 15 minutes before that to warm up. Then Galena is going to come. Then I'm going to warm up for an hour off ice. And then we are going to skate for an hour. And that is what okay. we're going to do. But okay. also, she goes, I mean, one time. They always make this reference, and I think it's like talking about shock absorbers. Unclear. I have to say, okay, Vicky, this okay. is you. Like, you want to be like luxury car. And I'm like, what? Like, I don't like fully, and I think they're talking about shock absorbers, right? And she goes, what kind of car do you drive? And I'm like, a Honda Accord. You need a Lexus. Oh, perfect car. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just about wanting it and then it, it manifests itself, Kalina. <laughs> and then I'm like, she's saying something. I'm like, I will like, I will get a Lexus when I win the Olympics. She hits me with her designer glove. By the way, they're YSL <laughs> gloves and they're like studded. Oh, nice. Like, right? Nice. She like hits me with it at one point. Take my glove. Go <laughs> Like the whole. <laughs> That's fine. You begin to like understand. Well, there's a there's actually a thing in singing that I think is like a similar concept that will like they'll talk about like the duck, like okay. that the duck is like super smooth on top of the water. Yeah, underneath the water, it's like it's kind of like the same idea, I suppose, as the shock absorbers, and then you just kind of stay fluid up on top. I think it makes sense. It makes sense. She is very technical. I have to say, like her technique and Victor's is the same, obviously, but it's very like specific, like what? Right. Dave, left arm in front, this is your 911. And I think she means it's your lifeline, right? Like, yeah. no matter what, put your left arm front for the spin, for the jumps, like, but like you know, the Russian English is like very- Yeah, much. yeah, like these idioms, yeah, could always use work. It's the hardest for me in foreign languages. She did let me know that she is good friends with Tarasova. Oh. She showed me that picture of her, Elena Tchaikovskaya, and Tarasova that is in Johnny's book, I think, of like the three of them, where okay. he calls them like the three pigeons on the wire or something. Okay. So, okay. but she also like, I asked her at some point, like, oh, if she liked Kostunaya. And it was her response was so interesting of like what she said. She goes, well, yes, she is from Tchaikovskaya's school of skating. Because remember, she only went to a Terry in 2017. And she came to a Terry with those beautiful skills. Yes. Yeah. So for her, like she didn't credit a Terry in terms of like those base, not that she discredited a Terry. It was just right. her response was, she is from Tchaikovsky's School of Skating. Oh, beautiful. You know, and you're like- Well, and in a way it's why she stands out among yeah. Everyone else that was there, it just seemed like from a different world. And yeah. she was right. Oh, what else? She got a new dog. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mina got it for her with the... Nice. Oh, they surprised her. Oh, he coming. Oh, 
knock on door, back door house. I, oh, Nina, Vika, oh, dog, b- blue uh, on top, uh, coming, running at me. <laughs> very smart dog, very smart dog, French bulldog. Oh, a French so smart dog of all things. That's so smart. Adorable. Smart dog. Very smart dog. You know? Amazing. <laughs> I was like, oh, these are things you need this to know. This is incredible. So, so, I mean, it's been interesting. Like, I remember back in the day when, like, we would pontificate or you and Jenny would pontificate about which coaching team you'd go to as oh, a skater yes. and all this sort of stuff. And it's funny. I don't know that, like, this Galena Victor combo ever came up, but you're, you're really digging this. Well, I did say Tarasaba back in the day, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. This is along that same line. So yeah, this is of that lineage. Yes. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. We did see an Orser article this week. And before we go into the Grand Prix and what all that's going to mean, I thought this is very interesting. Midvidova. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar. <laughs> so she's working with Orser over Zoom slash Skype slash FaceTime slash technology three times a week on the ice but she's working with Buyanova and Tarasova. And they said that they're going to evaluate the set, reevaluate the session after test gates. Now we know Tarasova worked with her on the program to masquerade waltz, which I think it's gonna be so Russian. And you know what, we're ready for it because actually those kinds of Russian war horses have all but disappeared from the framework. Like I'm ready for that. Mao did waltz masquerade, but Mm. Well, she did all the great Russian war, because she was also doing the Rachmaninoff and the Tchaikovsky, I mean, like, all of that stuff. But if you think about it, like, Vidova has that, like, feisty personality that you could give the music. And, like, Mao, the whole thing was that, like, the music was heavy and she was soft. And that was, like, the, they were, like, yeah, that was the idea. This, like, imagine the drama. Of it. Yes, she will give you that intensity. Yeah. Yeah. But I was wondering... So Elena Buyanova has coached an Olympic champion. Like, what do they need Brian Orser for? <laughs> I mean, right. is, is right. this a political thing at this point? The fact that there's like status of being with him and he's coached three, you know, to three Olympic gold medals because what is he really adding? Because Buyanova is also the coach in person with an Olympic. Is this like a funding slash like? Yeah, tricky to say, right? Because. Yeah. I, I mean, who knows then if she wants that jump help? Because Boyanova, she's had mixed results seemingly with her jump technique with her students. But isn't that really good? Um, the one who now CSKA is posting their quads and it's that Davidov, Devi, mm. sort of, uh, I think it's, yeah. He's at the CSKA rink with them. Yeah. You don't need Brian. Right. Right, I'm sorry, but like, obvious. like, um, yeah, and so maybe that is part of that reevaluation. You think? I just didn't know if he thought maybe she wasn't going to be up to it. You know, he said she's doing so much better than she was at this point last year, but I would assume that was just PR. But well, I took it as they said that she has Russian test gates, and then she's going to reevaluate. So here's the nuance of the Grand Prix: is that each skater is going to be in their home country competing, right? So if you're at Skate America, Skate America- Or where they, or where they train, yes. right? So like, yeah, those, those so training in that country would compete. If she's in Russia, she has, that's gonna be like another Russian nationals. That's gonna be Trusova, Shevakova, all of them, right? Would you wanna finish potentially that low? Right. And if she's not skating well and can't be competitive, are they gonna, bring her to Canada and have her do potentially a 14 day quarantine, which could mean skating on the other ice rink. You never know, you know, like by yourself or something, but would they then reevaluate that situation and try to do it that? Like, I think Yeah, that- because quite frankly, I mean, she'd have a great shot at Escape Canada. Are you kidding? And who <laughs> would, I mean, the, the Russian one would be a bloodbath. That, for instance, like, um, Skate Canada mm-hmm. will be ridiculous in ice stands. Yes. It's ridiculously difficult, you know, and then again, probably less so with the list. And I was hearing like Japan may not even have a pair competition because what's the point? But right. what is clear is that all of these Grand Prix events are going to be very dependent upon 
if the sponsor even wants to do it and then what the situation is like in two months, three months for the Grand Prix because like US schools are going back. There was that rally of all of the motorcycles in South Dakota of all of the um, people you hang out with on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, think about it. If, if like COVID spreads and it's already at like a certain level in the US, if that expands, obviously there's no Grand Prix. So there's no Ski America. It kind of depends on the situation in each country. So right. NBC I mean, says that they'll air anything. If you give them content, they will air it. Because they have I, nothing. I, they know that we're all hungry for something. We will mm -hmm. all tune in. And I would imagine from a sponsor standpoint, wouldn't it cost a lot less to do it this way? I would think in general, there would be a great deal of savings to be had financially. From it depends like if it's worth having the event. It depends how expensive I think it all is. of the testing is. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. I mean, it's an interesting concept, but I thought it was important also that they mentioned that like, these are just going to be kind of one and dones most likely. It, like mm -hmm. there's no world points being assigned. There's no this because certain countries could start to get creative. Yes. And how, and how they kind of pump up their own or showcase their own or whatever. Are all the judges their own? Because they all have to be net. I mean, are but you just I think the reason the world points again, I think that has a lot to do with like the fact that the ice dance event is so hard in uh, Canada. Canada. Are they, then, are they going to compare that with the ice dance in Japan and the ice dance in whatever other right. in China? Like that's going to be such a different right. feel. So yeah, I don't know. Um, but it's also interesting is that Orster said in that article that he hasn't spoken really or hasn't worked slash with Han Yu. And he tried to paint it off as that like this wasn't unusual, but he didn't say that Ghislaine hasn't spoken to him. You mm. can just tell that like there's more and more smoke uh, discussion about this whole relationship with the coaches in Japan where Mia Hamada is still technically Satoko's coach, even though she never works with her, but maybe she shows up at the competition and how Rika is like still technically Mia Hamada's student. Han Yu is technically Brian's student, but he really works with Ghislaine and Ghislaine is the one that he chose to go to the final. Like how much does Brian Arthur really work with Han Yu? It doesn't seem like very much at all if they haven't. Well, and how much months. is, what is Brian's official position at the cricket club? I mean, like he's does the he, head coach. He's the, yeah, he's I the mean, head person. So does it still behoove him to just like, keep the promotion of that club going or is it more yeah plus he has a brand he has a school and i'm not saying that he's not adding yeah. to the situation he's providing guidance and things it just isn't like that particular situation seems very mm. murky and if you don't mm. have if you don't have hanyu in the rink and you don't have Medvedeva, and then he doesn't work with jason as much because jason is more tracy and karen but maybe he's working with jason more now it's interesting to see like where his energies right. are being but right. at this point in time. Obviously he's working with June over Skype and I'm sure he's very busy and trying to plot out what is happening with the skaters, but it's interesting on that. It's interesting yeah, like, what these I, roles really are. Like, is he more of a strategist at this point and then a coach right. for others and what is happening, so. I'm intrigued like if, if their online work is most effective if they're, it's in real time, like go try this, or if it's in kind of video, these things, let me see them, let me make my notes, and then let's meet and talk about stuff. Like, I'm intrigued what their styles are that way. Yeah, it's interesting, because like when you work over Zoom, when you do jumps on camera, I don't know about voice, like you're right in front of the person, right? So you can right. see quite easily. Mm -hmm. But if you're teaching on a rink and someone is skating away from you and doing a right. jump, can you see as, like, is that as right. much? That's tough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what is, who knows, but I think that's all interesting to see. I mean, some people, a lot of people are doing choreography over Zoom. I know that Benoit um, worked with Delilah's kids over Zoom. That's like, they worked the program, but you get to learn, like, I don't know if he was in the rink or if he did it in his house, but that's kind of how people are adapting for the near future. So. I mean, you gotta do something, I suppose. Of course, it's not the same to have someone's yeah. hand on you and move your arm or 
put you in a position or something like that. But <clears throat> if, if the alternative is nothing. Mm -hmm. They I mean, also didn't announce prize money for the Grand Prix. Did yeah. you see that they didn't mention Yeah, but again, I think that's a tricky call. And they were like, yeah. we may just leave it up to each individual thing. Because again, like you're saying, with an outrageously competitive event like dance in Canada mm -hmm. or um, the ladies in Russia. I mean, how, how could you possibly... And that Make money may need to go to put on the event. Right. It could be prohibitively expensive for different security measures. I would say more even about the officials, like keeping them safe and how, like, are they going to be in person? Are they going to be like in little pods? Like when people go to dinner in Amsterdam and they each have their little glass right. box? A like, little booth. Yeah. These are all things you have to think about. Like what right. is happening? There. So yeah, I don't know. It's going to be, it's going to be a, like a really fascinating months i think something that we'll all look back on and be like remember those days <laughs> like, yeah and and who knows what can come out of this moving forward i mean this will be clunky this will be clunky the first time around i think we'll see some great things some awful things um because it's interesting like um france is going to attract an interesting group because it's going to be all those lambiel kids oh yeah and they have all those coaches that are under investigation this week. They're oh, like, also, also that. Uh, but like, I mean, it's interesting. Like, for instance, it sounds like then most likely Shoma would compete potentially. Yeah, is he in, in sort of? Right is he in Switzerland right now? I'm not. I have. Well, he was like, though. Wasn't he was. Or did I make he? that up? Okay. I know Koshiro is there. Is he there? He might be. I, or like, wasn't Rika there? Rika like, is there, so she's so probably there. Yeah. Are you shipping them back to? Japan so that they can compete no, at I imagine she's or... staying there. They didn't mention Rika in the Orser article. Yeah. She's so staying with Lombiel if it's going well. You know, right. that, why, why would yeah, why, why, yeah, exactly. For exactly. a two week period to adjust to another new coach right before the season, like that right. at this point in the season, if there's going to be competitions and you're making progress, I think she would just stay at this point. Because it's interesting how geographic And maybe in December you move or maybe, yeah. What do you I, I do think like, how on earth are you going to do a final though? Oh, no way. Unless it's virtual and it's like an exhibition. So they might do something like that. Like I mean, but even to figure out those qualifications, again, you can't just, we know you can't really compare scores across competitions with different venues and stuff the same way. No like. Way. It won't be a final like that. I think that they would do maybe like, you know, how they did the ISU virtual, let's raise money for this, so let's have the awards. I think it would be something like, so-and-so is going to skate here. So-and-so is going to, maybe invitation based on perform, you know, the whole deal, I mean. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I could see the events going, but not the final. I think, yeah, I think, be, uh, look. This is not the year to worry about a Grand Prix final. This is a year to be happy that there's a competition and you have an mm. opportunity to go out and keep developing yeah. and meet the final. Because again, like we said, I think we will be watching a dance final at Skate Canada, should it happen. Yeah. And I think we'll be watching a women's final basically in Russia. You yeah, know. I, I really think that for skaters competing, that you have to change your perspective about whatever this season is. I know myself, I would be thinking, long game Olympics. Yeah. yeah. That's how I'm even thinking about my own skating. My mom just loves to walk into the room as I'm filming now. I used to close the door so they wouldn't come in because, you know, I feel very judged. And she's like talking as though she's appearing on screen and she's not. We're filming a recording right now and she's not a part of this. But she, you know. Amazing. Skating mom. Skating mom. Skating mom. This is what, but it's okay because I've actually bought a new desk and a green screen and everything. So maybe I will film in a different room. In the, in the Fun. Computer. But she's, yeah. So you can have a flock of birds when we discuss Adam in the 2018 uh, Patreon. That'll be in time. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, so, but I, I got like a debt. I got a, I spent three hundred dollars on an ergonomic chair because also because my shoulder issues and I want to fix that and the fact that my insurance is like, well, we're gonna cut off your PT for the rest of the year. You know what? Screw and yeah. I'm just make it, we're gonna make it happen. You need like that medicine ball. I mean, I think that happens probably to a lot of people who have now transitioned to working at home. Is oh yes. Is your token just chair or your dining room chair designed to be sat in eight hours a day 
to properly. And you know, I only like the best, you know. Exactly. (laughs) I need to get the Lexus of desk chairs. The hybrid. (laughs) Now there are going to be 50 people commenting about what their chairs are and which one they recommend. I'm going to be like, I already purchased it, but thank you very much for that information. Exactly. Photos, please, of your favorite chair. (laughs) They're really going to send it. Uh, They really will. Um, Yeah. So anyway, that's interesting. we watched the Trusiva documentary, which yeah. I have to say, I really, I really love a country that takes this sport seriously. <clears throat> I thought the way that they handled it, they did not dumb it down. If we did something like this in the United States, it would be like, Trusiva likes puppy dogs. And like, she'd be like, and she jumps or something. <laughs> this was when they were doing slow-mos of her and Plushenko both doing their quad toes and talking about how the rotation like is delayed and wider and one and quicker and tighter and the other and they're going to try to do i was like this is i love this kind of coverage yeah and i, and I know that we think of him as like a buffoon because of his statements and the way he acts and you know this, but in terms of the quad i was thinking he may work with her more than maybe kostunaya he's like very clear that like rizanov is doing like the work with kostunaya but I have a feeling with Trusiva, he may be more involved there in getting her to jump. In that yeah. kind of thing where maybe he sees himself or something, because he's yeah. talking, he's like, she's she's wired mentally like I am. They're two jumpers with bad skating skills, but... But that could help each other, because I have to tell you, like, she has tremendous jumping talent, obviously, but if we've discussed, as we've discussed before, like, it's interesting because she's achieving these monumental athletic feats that kind of leave me cold a little bit. They don't have the same impact. Mm -hmm. And gosh, we can roll our eyes about all of Plushenko's programs, Mm -hmm. but man, was that technique stunning. Even when they were showing some of those slow-mos, it's insane. It's interesting because they have test skates coming up. So the juniors are going to happen this coming week. They're going to start tomorrow, I believe, at like 8 a.m. our time for the juniors. But you know, the fan hysteria is going to be insane and immediately going to be like in the press about like the changes we see in each person now it takes months to adjust to a new coach and of course also let's not be each of these girls grew during quarantine trusova got way taller and the first quad lets we saw it looked under rotated so and i think shabakova is going to be taller and i would imagine kosternaya has grown and we heard we heard that she's like quite injured that was confirmed by him and others i would be not shocked um if coaster and i didn't do the test skates but then did like the russian cup because every russian skater has to do two russian cups to go to nationals and that's kind of how they're keeping their skaters going i know the usfs is trying to do other domestic competitions uh, like that and it also help keep some of these rinks afloat that help finance these competitions but it's interesting that they're gonna the way that they're doing everything because i have a feeling why would coaster and i go to the test gate she's been injured she has to get two new programs if she looks anything less than a million dollars everyone's gonna be like see she should stay with a terry why would you write that hysteria you skip it and you go to the russian cup a hundred percent that's when you prepare for. And she's got like this problem and that problem and you wait until you look at Well, it $1. seems rushed, the the test skates. Like for everyone, I would have mm-hmm. thought maybe they could at least have delayed those a smidge more because that's oh. like a, a, a frenzied kind of hurry, get There's it There's all of this drama about her programs and all of that BS, but it seems pretty clear that she has injuries, they're open about them, which in past, she's had injuries before for a long yeah. period of time. And they were like quieter about them or she wouldn't, like, I would, why would you go to the test gate? Unless right. she looks great now, I would take yeah. that time and get ready and not rush yourself. Because if she loses to Sherbakova at the test gate, and I'm sure Ateri is going to be training Sherbakova. To make a statement. To yeah. make a statement, yeah. So I would, I would let Trusiva go, please. It's so ridiculous because honestly, at this point, these three skaters are so like advanced in their careers. I think the really people you can kind of measure Blashenko as a coach would be like the more up and coming skaters, like and how these skaters do long term, like twenty twenty two. But I would look at like how is Gillen developing? Does he pull right. the other skaters in? We saw that he has Elena Ilinik now working on um, off-ice choreography with her ballerina husband. I mean, they're making the 
plays for Plashenko School. I'll be doing a separate Russia video later today, but they are making plays to really get a team right. in order in, in that A full-blown center. Yeah, a full-blown training facility. I mean, that's pretty amazing, actually. Yeah, so, and they still don't have a developmental coach at the Terry's rink. So, who knows? Like, what But it's interesting, like, um, he was even talking about the, the, the Russian sentiment sometimes, how quick they are to flip. Mm -hmm. um, because he was talking about Sochi a little bit in that, where he was like, one minute, he was literally the biggest hero for mm -hmm. having done the team event. Now, we had our own thoughts about um, his withdrawal from the individual event, but that Russia just, he said, flipped on him immediately, vilified him, just like raked him over the coals. Like that just at the drop of the hat, they were ready to dump you. And it's just so funny to see, still, I know this is like leftover conversation from our previous episodes, but just that like everyone is getting behind a grown woman who's vilifying preteens, young teens. Like this is- They're all playing games weird. right now in the press yeah. and other, um... How about, so they're playing a real game with Valieva. They gave her Bolero, iconic war horse. You know that she's gonna do a million leg kicks, but you know that they are gonna be like, modern music, modern angular choreography, so different. I mean, that is the Terry's pick to win the Olympics. Her and Sherbako, that is. Yeah. And there has been a lot of speculation within Russia, like, will Valieva leave next? But please, why would she leave? She's like, She's going to be given the world. At the, I bet she's yeah. getting a lot of, uh, yeah. they're pulling out all the stops for her, I would assume. Unfortunately, yeah. it just speaks to the underlying problem that if you think pulling out the stop for a skater <laughs> as beautiful as Valieva is giving her a bunch of high kicks to Bolero, you're kind of missing what you have in front of you. <laughs> yes, but they will say that it is beautiful and brilliant. It's like when they put Sakitova in a tutu and the Russian press was like, so balletic. Like, come on, yeah. this is all a game. This is... Right. Right. But they're going to do this to push her components up to make sure that she is at 9.5 for the Olympics. Right. That is right. what this it is It starts now. Yeah. Oh, yes. So yeah. I'm, more I'm more curious to see who else leaves once they go back to training because they're supposed to be going back into the rinks. Like, would Petrosian leave? Uh, would Akatieva? Would the boy? Like, I think that's more interesting to know, like, which each person. Well, and who knows? Because we're also going to like you said, these first few outings are going to be unfairly um, judged from Costa Naya and Trusova about the success of the change, which has been so short and can indicate really nothing yet. Mm -hmm. um, but they're going to they're going to put a lot of pressure on how that goes, I think, to see if other people will do it and follow suit or if they're like, see, they made a mistake. Oh, of course. Yeah. But yeah. Trusova grew like a lot and uh, yeah so i'm curious to see what it'll be very dramatic though yeah like the and the clips we were watching of like kosternaya like <laughs> working on choreography or like people were what, freaking out about that that she's getting with, pushing with the high five and i was like oh my gosh like honestly she should be teaching you pushing <laughs> how to move your body not vice versa but okay but I love to see that like Rosado was in the backward hat, like he was feeling himself choreographer like the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. playing the part, playing the part. Oh yes, lots of things. And then also we're seeing a lot of clips in the US now of the pairs. Like we have real two real training centers. Like a lot of people left Jim, he was supposed to move to Detroit. Don't know if he moved is in Florida, what? But we do see that Jenny and Todd and then Delilah how each have tons of pair teams obviously ashley and tim in uh their own training. thing yeah, yeah they're doing their own thing and that may work for them but interesting to see that there's a lot of competition and things going on but we saw that on ice perspectives visited that rink and in jenny and todd's and we saw a little bit of jessica and brian doing mm -hmm. who wants to live forever and then but there are a lot of pair teams that would like want full editorial control because one of them like under rotated a jump and the other one did double and it, you're like yeah okay. i was surprised that that part was included quite honestly yeah, yeah. 
especially because he's so up with people. I was shocked that that was in there. Yeah. I mean, and it's interesting, the excitement I have felt from seeing the clips from Alexa and Brandon. Mm. Very encouraging, very, I'm really like looking forward to watching how this develops. Mm. And, you know, Brian and Jessica had such like a lovely B plot, you know, like mm -hmm. going on in their skating last year that they kept getting better and they were having nice moments for them. But um, this kind of reminded me that there may be some limitations uh, to how far this particular partnership can take them. Mm -hmm. And they're lovely skaters and what lovely people to have in the Paris program. But I mean, when you sort of compare that to- They're extremely what, important for the depth. Yeah, I, I, that's that's exactly the, the right way to put it because I think you know we're probably looking at one pair at the Olympics. Or, and I it mean, maybe Alexa and Brandon. That's you have to think we've got about like five to six pairs that are really important in the U.S. to push each other because look, Canada had about six, and then now they're down to like three to four. So it's interesting to see it all shifting. But you have to look in the U.S. now. You have Alexa and Brandon. Ashley and Tim, Jessica and Brian, Tara and Danny, um, and then TJ and his partner. And those I think are really the teams that are with the depth moving forward, who mm. look particularly strong. Uh, I do think Delilah is also making moves. I mean, she's got all those boys working outside. They've got Natalia Miskachanuk, they have Doug LaDre. I mean, they're making a push to have a pair center, all those boys working out together during quarantine, getting stronger. I mean, Mark Sadowski looked in really good shape, throwing like better than he ever looked. Uh, you look at around, like there are a lot of people making moves right now. I think you can use quarantine to kind of bolster things. But I thought how interesting that Alexa and Brandon chose to show stroking drills. Now this is really interesting to me because this was gamesmanship of the highest order. And I have to like respect to like <laughs> Alexa because think about it she and Chris were never known for skating skills before. Right. She's showing you it's just a stroking drill. They looked fast. They looked together. They looked like world-class. Her back was arched. She looked confident and she was like glowing. Well, and, and you it, know, everyone looking at a new pair is looking for that togetherness, looking mm -hmm. for that like kind of gelling. And so I thought also, you've shown us, we can, we've seen that they can do jumps. We've seen that they can do other pairs elements, but like, the, I agree with you. This is really smart to be like, in case you're wondering about this new partnership, look at how we're working on all this. Amazing. <laughs> and I, from an international standpoint, like everyone I think in the US just always thinks so small in the Paris right. program, right? Like yeah. for those that have the guts to kind of think on an international level, I see the judges always going with Alexa and Brandon right. over their, their kind of ho-hum about um, Danny and Tara, and they definitely are reluctant to give extra credit for Ashley and Tim, internationally, it seems. Yeah. I think Alexa and Brandon have the most international appeal. Long term, they have to get the kinks worked out. Yeah, We course. haven't seen their twist yet. I'm sure we won't see that until it is like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> next level, enormous, but yeah, I'll be very curious. Jessica and that. Brian too, also, they, they, um, they don't, they're, they seem very American. They seem very like they lack an international flavor to it. Hmm. So, yeah, but it's interesting now. Megan and Bruno are starting to have more pair teams in Canada. There, everyone's making back to Medvedeva. Like back in the day, I thought this her move to Orser and stuff could make her a real coaching force at some point. Should she choose to do that? This is a high level athlete who's receiving such interesting information from prominent camps in totally different ways. And now she's getting inundated with this Tarasova, Buyanova kind of approach after knowing the Ateri approach, after knowing the Tracy Bryan approach. Like, I think she's really collecting a great deal of information that should she decide at some point to lead her own skating school, she could really have like a diverse, so yeah. Who's a Terry gonna replace Hot Sergey with? Because that's extremely important. Someone subservient, I would think. Y no, yes, but you need to be, yeah, but that person is always gonna leave because they're gonna get so much experience coaching athletes and then move higher. But if you're that developmental coach who's really helping people put triples together and quads and triple axles and putting 
together competitive programs and teaching someone how to train, even if you come in with some triples and then it's like that next stage. I, like there are rumors that she's asked Shella Penn to do that, but Shella Penn mm. didn't feel ready. Shella Penn, who you know ran away from the training center at one point and escaped to the forest, that Shella Penn, yes. No. Um, Not <laughs> eager to return just yet, <laughs> okay. Medvedeva's personality would have been ideal for that kind of a role. Right. Now you look that Ilyinik is at Plushenko's. Is he gonna get Yulia to do off ice choreography and spins? Would Yulia do it? Yeah. There's a pandemic. There are no shows. She has a new baby. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> show me the Yana money. Yes, I'm right. going to do that. Oh, um, oh, at that ring. Sorry, I yes. thought you were talking about it at Tyria's yeah. ring. Oh, okay. I think Plushenko is going to get you. I think that's the next one I would watch to join his ring. So Interesting. Okay. Oh, please, it's like the spin coach and the, the right. yes, off ice flexibility, off ice, whatever. Oh, because point. also there is this thing about ageism that we see sometimes in skating. Like, it's nice to see someone like Lombiel teach. They just did it. They were just doing this. Like, and I think that kind of, of knowledge, if you're able to describe it in, in a good way, can be really effective to be like, oh, I know, when I do it, I do this. Instead of having someone in shoes, not that Galena wasn't helpful for you, <laughs> but I mean, just like someone wearing street shoes at the rink, uh, you know, at the boards, just kind of dictating something, theoretically, you know, it could be different for them. It would be nice to see some of their more recent competitors applying what they I mean, know. John Nix never wore skates. Then again, he wasn't the most technical, but he, he was brilliant, so. Yeah. Totally. I'm not saying yeah. it couldn't be done, but it, I think there's a wealth of knowledge for people who were competing more recently to pass on that info. Does Elton John wear skates? I don't think so, but she's more of the head coach too, when she coaches. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. that's... I, for instance, I don't think she can say, now when I'm in the air in a twist, I found this. But someone like Megan could. Someone like Eliona could. I, so... It's an interesting... Pluses and minuses around the board. So Exactly, yeah. exactly. Usually yeah. in a series of five. <laughs> yes, lots going on. Also, I watched some documentaries this week. Um, yesterday, I, was, I watched the David Foster one on Netflix. You have to do it. Okay. 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 My parents were like, the Clive one was great. He seemed so nice. And I'm like, I think Clive had a... To me, he seemed like a mafia man who no one was going to speak ill of. But I need more information on this. I, I have to be honest, I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a documentary on Netflix. Okay. It seems like they produced a bunch of music documentaries all, like they got the same play. There's one in Chicago, there's one on okay. David Foster, there's one in Clive. It looks like they filmed a series of interviews and then okay. packaged them, right? The David Foster one is so, I mean, he's so arrogant, such a narcissist, but him coaching people in the... Um, in the recording studio, it's like these coaches pulling things out with okay. these moody performers. Okay. Um, next, next level. But just okay. you know, Barbara Streisand is in the David Foster one. Okay. She let us know that she's very easy to work with in the studio. And usually if you have to tell us, we totally believe it. <laughs> I believed it. Okay. 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 But she and David Foster seem like on the same page of everything so okay well and barbara's like a kind of artist that knows exactly what she's doing she has a total like technical mastery of how she produces sound and her kind of stuff cool. where i think so many of these others really need help yes. I'll say that. she told david foster she wanted somewhere to sound like it was in another on another planet and he was like we'll do the synthesizers and do this and then that's you know these are two this is like tarasova Yes, the level well, kind of, yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> but the members of Chicago were like extremely moody because he had, their whole thing was that they had three play three horn players in the band and he was like, yeah, so we're not going to do that. But what we're going to do is this. And like, they're very salty about the whole experience. And he was mm. like, yeah, well, they're still making money on a career off of those songs that I did for them. And he was like, it mm. just reminded me of skating so much. I was so Yeah, proud. exactly, exactly. The one creating it and the one sort of like pulling the strings behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, David Foster wasn't that nice. He didn't seem that bad in the back. 
Did you not? Just saying. Now, I mean, sure documentaries, very, I always take I'm them sure he's very aside. arrogant because it wasn't like a fly on the wall documentary, but. Okay, got it. He might have had some say in how that documentary was <laughs> proceeding. Yes. Okay. Loved it. Yeah, so, like, what else is going on, Jonathan? Like, what? What else is happening? Well, now, like, okay, so now that I'm like done with this sort of like intensive yes. teaching, like, I'm excited because now I have Russian test gates to be following this coming week, I suppose. Yes, we have test so. gates for the juniors. I mean, have you, I mean, come on, just so many. Yeah, I have to brush up again on some of the names, quite honestly, yes. some of the Russian junior names. And then we have like the US, like little Hershey competitions in Colorado. These skaters are gonna start competing at these events that maybe they wouldn't usually, cause they have to now for different exposure and gamesmanship and points. So yes, I'm... It could be a thing. And I'm excited, Dave, you are gonna just slap me upside the head tomorrow when you hear some of my marks for the 2018 men. <laughs> All right. So I'm ready. You have been you have been warned. Yeah, it's not as egregious as my love for the Russian men in uh, the, short the short program, program. but yeah, that was intense. <laughs> That's all right. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to okay. just let it, let the BS wash over me. Yeah, just <laughs> just ride that wave, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Shanko article. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, Olden Edge looks sexy, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.